viewers and welcome to the fourth of our programmes coming courtesy of Newry and Moore District Council. My name is Hilary Halliday and over the last three weeks I've been chatting to councillors from Newry City, uh, from the Fuse and from the Mourns and today I'm uh, joined in the studio by uh, councillors from the Crotleave area. So councillors, good morning, good, you're very welcome and would you like to introduce yourselves? Thanks very much Hilary. Uh, my name is Michael Carr. I'm a member of the SDLP uh, grouping on, on Newry Morning Council. Uh, I was elected uh, back in 2001 and uh, I have to say I've enjoyed, enjoyed my term on, uh, on Newry Morning Council. Good. And? Uh, Councillor Mickey Ruan, uh, also a Crad Leave Councillor from Warren, Warren Point and I represent the Sinn Féin grouping on the Council and I've been a Councillor from 2001 also. You're both very welcome. Um, both Warren Point councillors, so this morning we're obviously going to be talking a lot about Warren Point. <laughs> well, last week um, I was speaking to the Mourns councillors and we are talking about tourism in the Mourns. And I know there's a lot been going on in Warren Point uh, this, this year uh, with the festivals and particularly the, the, the cruise ship coming into Warren Point. It created a lot of buzz and there was thousands in Warren Point on that day. How do you think it went? Oh, it was a great day, Hilary. It was a good day for <coughs> not just Warren Point, but for the whole district. They came in their thousands at uh, at 7.30 in the morning for the, dock sh uh, the, the ship docking at 8 o'clock. Um, it was spectacular. It was a beautiful morning coming down the lock. And uh, we hope it's the first of many cruises coming into Warren Point. Uh, the two young men involved there uh, have to be commended for their efforts. Uh, along with uh, uh, staff from uh, Warren Point Harbour Authority, but there's a real it, it showed its real potential, and uh, Newry Morning Council pulled out all the stops to make the, the visitors very welcome. They did indeed. There was a, there was a lot of there was a lot of effort went into that particular day. I know the council put a lot of money into it as well. Do you think uh, it paid off? Yeah, I think uh, one of the words Michael used was potential, and it shows the potential we have in our area. And although uh, we represent the whole of Newry and Mourn, I suppose when you're from the particular town that the event uh, took place in, you can see the real benefit to that town in particular. And I know all the businesses done really well that day. And to see the crowds in the town that day, I don't think anybody has witnessed it for quite a few years. So it's how we build on it and how we move on from it. And as Michael said, uh, hopefully we can attract more cruise ships in the years to come. And as I say, our own council staff played a big part in it as well. They definitely yeah. did. Yeah. I, think that, I think there is plans in the pipeline for maybe, not maybe next year, but the following year, because these things have to be planned well in advance, I believe, you know, to get a cruise ship in. Yeah, <coughs> it's brochures going out and all that type of thing, taking bookings. So yeah, there's a two year advance plan. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are quite optimistic. Uh, um, I suppose the biggest thing was to test whether they could cater for it enough. The, the water was deep enough and uh, that there was good access into the town. I also uh, organised a number of coach trips uh, around the district, uh, to Belfast, into the Mourns, Armagh City and so on. So yeah, it was. Uh, it really was a good success and uh, yeah. we'd, we'd love to see some more coming. Well, I was chatting to a few, I was down myself that day and I was chatting to a few of the passengers and they just thought Warren Point was the most beautiful place they had been. Um, they were absolutely overwhelmed by it. Yeah, and I think that's the thing about it is when you live in an area, maybe you don't appreciate you don't it as appreciate much as it, other yeah. people who come into it. And I think uh, it's there for everyone to see the, the setting. You have the Coolies on one side, the Mourns on the other side and Carningford Lock right up the middle. And Warren Point or Straver, even on the Omeath Carlingford side beautiful. of it, you know, it's absolutely yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And as I say, it's uh, it's growing that potential for the whole area, not just Warren Point, but the whole area and what we can get out of it. And I suppose uh, it's a testament to the work when people work together to try and make something happen that it can uh, be a success. And uh, that was, uh, I think, that's what proved the winner for this uh, particular. Item and what I would say is the brochure that Michael talks about. I think uh, when we were showing it first off, I think yeah, you're actually yourself made the comment, Michael. I wouldn't mind going there myself because the brochure was <laughs> the brochure was it's actually exciting. first class. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if anybody uh, even from the area actually looked through it, would be is, is that sort be of thing. Impressed yeah, it. yeah. Couldn't help but be impressed by the the quality of the brochure and not only the quality of it, but what we have to offer in the area. Good. Well, of course, there's other things been going on more in point over the summer. Have they? The Maidens of the Morn, which has been going for 25 years now, uh, the um, Fiddler's Green Festival, the Kilbrony Vintage Show, a lot of things happening to bring tourists in. Do you think 
we're, we're winning on that one. Well, uh, yeah, and that's a lot of effort, a lot of community effort and, and volunteers putting their time and effort into uh, yet another festival. Um, I think, yes, we've, we've been packed out on occasions this year, uh, the Blues Festival in particular. Uh, the Fiddler's Green was very successful. The Maidens of Morn this year had a major uh, marquee where a lot of events uh, went on. Um, and uh, yes, the good successes. I think you've got to keep revisiting uh, your itinerary year on year mm -hmm. and see how it goes. And uh, 25 years of the Maidens of Morn. Uh, <coughs> hard to believe. I Still going. Only, I, I was only 18 when I started. <laughs> But you were an escort <laughs> that year, weren't you? <laughs> no, no. Well, you see, and that's the things, sort of things that change the escorts. You yes. know, I think are missed too as well. Absolutely. And maybe it's time, uh, without any criticism to the festival itself, maybe it's time for a bit of a revamp mm -hmm. and a, and a relook at it for the next 25 years. Well, well, you have to admire the dedication of the committee. Uh, I know it has changed over the years, yeah. but they're still there, aren't they, really? Yeah, I think uh, it's like every uh, festival, and I think uh, one of the ones that was missed there was the Blues Festival, mm -hmm. which is a huge success in the area, and I think it's, it's become second to none for what it offers. But there's a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into it uh, to make these festivals happen, to organise them, make sure the, the events are run properly and all that there. But I would agree with Michael on the regarding the Maidens of Morn, maybe a revamp and a uh, re-look at the whole uh, layout of the festival maybe mm -hmm, needs mm -hmm. to be done because mm -hmm. it's if you rest on your laurels then you, you maybe fall back on things but That's I think true. it needs to be looked at and it's about improving it and it's not about criticising people for what they have been doing but it's maybe looking at it in a different way. Yeah and of course uh, one of the big things that have happened over the last year is the mountain bike trails. Um, they're a huge attraction to people from all over Ireland really not just from Newry and Morn. Yeah. How do you think that's impacted on the um, tourism f figures and uh, the economic impact as well, with yeah. people coming to use those? I, th I think if we look back, I think the first meeting we ever had in this was probably way back in 2005. And I think maybe the first impression from councillors and officials maybe was, uh, you know, is this practical? Is, it, is there any potential in it or whatever? But to think uh, to where we are now with the trails in place and how successful they've been. You just have to witness the, the number of uh, vehicles coming through Warren Point Head now towards Restriver mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. the bikes on them. It, it is just uh, phenomenal what uh, it has done. The Kilbrony Park, uh, the numbers that are coming through it is second to none. What we have to offer there, we'll now have a new, uh, a new sort of a visitor centre attraction. That's right, new that'll event be open, space, yeah, yes. Event mm -hmm. space, which will again will add to the park. It's, uh, Year on year, it's just improving, and uh, the numbers are there to be seen. The park, the weather obviously helps. This year was a, a good summer, so it's uh, mm -hmm. it's made all the festivals that more attractive, and it's brought Absolutely. the people yeah, out. I know the Kilbrony Vintage Show. It was yeah. just a, a great success this year. Yeah, for everyone. Yeah, I think uh, along with all the benefits that Michael's talking about, there is the the other spin-offs, the additional tourism. Uh, outlets that have been created because uh, because the trails mm -hmm. uh, were put in There's new bedrooms, new uh, new eating facilities. Uh, people see the opportunities and, and they jump on it. So the mm -hmm. entrepreneurship is still there, alive and well, in Warren Point and Trevor across yeah. the district. You know, so uh, in bringing people to the area, we do create uh, opportunities. So it has a good economic impact yes. on Without on. Both doubt, yeah, yeah, yeah you were saying there's a lot of B and B's of, uh, are benefiting from the trails. B and B's and uh, some new businesses, uh, particularly in Warren Point, uh, they have uh, regenerated uh, what was the boathouse in the Lock and Key now. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. The new ship is uh, self catering equipment, and they all, as well as uh, catering for the the B and B visitor, they're also looking at catering for the bicycle, restoring the bicycle and cleaning oh, right. the bicycles uh -huh, uh -huh. and so on. So they're all, all add-ons that create another wee bit of revenue. Great. So you can see that continuing, that's just going to get better and better, isn't it really? Is it? Yeah, that would be the hope and I think uh, it's been acknowledged that there is a lack of uh, facilities, uh, B&Bs, hotel beds, mm -hmm. whatever in this area, not just in Warren Point but throughout the area and that's something over the years we'll have to improve if we want to uh, sort of make it a place for people to come and visit to stay, stay. overnight. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. But even for the town of Warren Point, even them buildings that have been laying derelict for a number of years, you know, it, it's unsightly. It doesn't look good for the 
the town centre itself, just them being redeveloped has added so much to the town and improved the town so much and it needs to be acknowledged that people have actually uh, taken on these uh, properties and redeveloped them and put their own finances yeah, into it. So yeah. If, if yeah, we want to get the private sector to come yeah. on board. And so if by the, the mountain bike trails from council side of things can, uh, you know, sort of impress on people to do what has happened in mm -hmm. one point, then that's, that's all good. We're, we're, we're very conscious then of catering for the visitor when they do get here. So uh, there's another scheme the council has been involved in is the Wi-Fi, pu uh, free public oh, access right, yes. to Wi-Fi, uh -huh, uh -huh. which will be uh, again uh, started up before the end of this month, I think mm -hmm. by Halloween, uh, our economic development uh, area has been working on it for some time and we will welcome that where we'll have uh, free access in the square along Good. the main streets. And right that's happening front. already in, in the city of Newry, isn't it? It, it places, is, yeah. yes. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't got the feedback on exactly how well it's working, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, it's there and Good. it'll be available in Warren Point. Good. Well now, we're staying with Warren Point and we're going to talk about um, the jewel in the crown of Warren Point, the park. Uh, I believe there's, um, there's been a million pounds heritage lottery funding to work up a strategy um, for the upgrading of the park. Now, um, do you think, um, what would you like to see happening in the park? Well again, uh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, again, uh, again, Michael says it's something that has been worked up for a good number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I would commend the, the groups involved uh, in, uh, in bringing it to where it is now and making an application uh, to the lottery funding. Yes, it has been successful. Mm -hmm. uh, we're bringing in a full-time person. Uh, I think that person has already, she hasn't, been, yeah, been, appointed. already been appointed. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, it will be her job then to like you say, work up the strategy, mm -hmm. the consultation. You can't do anything. Uh, there's a lot of I heard it to Gin Warren Pine Park. Yeah, well, very the, and, and the, pe the people are going to be, uh, you know, consulted about what they, what they want to do. Is Correct. that right, right. Mike? Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. It's it's not really about what me or Michael wants in the yeah. park. It's about what's best for the town and the, the surrounding area, and in keeping with the park because uh, it is over 100 years it old. Is indeed, yeah, yes. and. Uh, as I say, I think the one thing that comes out of it is, uh, and it shows from the mountain bike trails to the park in Warren Point to the baths in Warren Point, it's about partnership and it's not about council in isolation doing anything, it's about working with whatever groups are out there. Mm -hmm. the, even the local Chamber of Commerce, we have an ongoing discussion with them for a long number of years now. We meet them on a regular basis and it's a good opportunity for us to, to sort of deal with them, discuss yeah, and the bring, issues. Bring that are, everybody yeah, bring everybody on board. And it, so it, it has worked and it works well and if, if we, we as a council collectively, not just in Warren Point, but collectively, if we want to do the best for RA, then it's about working in partnership Absolutely. with the groups that are already yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And I think we do do it and I think where groups have worked with, with us, they can see the benefits of, of that as well. So it's keeping that. Well, Warren Point Park is beautiful, isn't it really? And, and on, a, on a good day, I remember the day of the, the, the saga coming through um, yeah. It was just looked fantastic with all the the bandstand and the bands playing in it. It was beautiful. Yeah. What sort of things would you like to see upgraded now in the park? Well, I, I think we can't uh, forget our, our heritage really. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, the bandstand is a major feature in the uh, in the park. It's well used. It's it's what's known as a living park. I think where it's actively used by people oh, I bet. Young, different, young and old, for yeah. all sorts. Mm -hmm. Um, I can even remember the time that we used to play five side soccer on it, but you wouldn't get doing that now. <laughs> keep off the grass. <laughs> yeah, keep <laughs> off the grass, yeah. Um, so, uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't like to see it change too much. No, but, no, definitely uh, not. There, there is a possibility of even capturing that whole history and heritage in, in part of what uh, would be a mini museum in, in one of the sheds down there at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful area. And we have to be very careful when it's like that, and hence the need for the consultation. A lot yeah. of people will feel very, very strongly about it. Um, but the, the numbers, day by day, summer and winter, uh, the numbers of people that use one well park used, is quite yeah. phenomenal, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce, like Megan mentioned, was uh, involved in their uh, Christmas Yuletide fairs and things like that. So we're, we've now got into the habit of bringing in a sort of a, a tented village. For, yes, it's uh, a, and, it's, it and it works very up. well works just very in, in that setting, doesn't it? Yes, it's just because of the setting. and the I think the, the little pavilion at the gate, um, 
should be something should be done about that because it's a, it's a lovely little building, isn't it? Yeah, I think the the problem being is we're constrained maybe in a lot of the things that people would like to see in it. I think we have to remember, you know, the the park itself. It's trying to keep it to what it was, but at the same time improving it, which mm -hmm. is, it's difficult enough to do that. But I think it's trying to create more events within the park because probably in the past the uh, kids coming in to use the, the, the swings etc and mm -hmm. people walking through it there hasn't been a whole lot in it but the last number of years with the Chamber of Commerce and the fairs and that there and even there back three weeks ago there was an outdoor cinema in it which proved very oh, successful right. yeah. uh -huh. and uh, it was the first time it had been done and uh, everybody that I'd spoke to who had been added uh, had loads of praise for it so that's something that's been added to it and I think the heritage crowd too themselves they were, uh, what they were looking for was uh, the park to be used more. Absolutely, and I, to think, attract I think we should be it. encouraging yeah. different groups to do different things yeah, in, in the park throughout. Means. And I remember we used to have the, um, the summer uh, band concerts. The, that has sort of um, fallen away a bit, has I, it? I, I still do it still uh, do on that. a certain number of Sundays throughout the, throughout the summer. They put a band in there, everything from the, the silver band. And we've, uh, uh, we have a good history of... Uh, uh, Relationships between bands and more bands as well, you yes, know, and uh -huh. they can do the concert setup uh, right through to uh, some of the old favourites like Ample Time and, uh, and and many other, and some bands I haven't heard of <laughs> the, the, the names of, but yes, and it's like you say, it's it's a wonderful venue. Uh, we do have some considerations that we need to make about seating arrangements and things oh, like that, okay. which will be taken into the whole. Uh, consultation on, on, on where we're going with, with the park. So this consultation is going to last for a year, is that right? So, or the strategy has a year to be worked up? It has, yeah. Right, it's and then what happens after that? Well, I suppose it's what comes out of the consultation, what people are looking mm -hmm. within it, what's doable within it, and then I suppose at the end of it we'll, we'll sit down and we'll uh, agree what then finally happens with it. And, I suppose you don't want to be... So what's the time scale? What are we looking at? So yeah, I'm not too sure myself now, to be honest. It would be wrong with me to say. Uh, it will be a couple of years anyway. It's, a, it's a, a year or two down the line, oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I suppose not to uh, expectations of something happening for next yeah, summer. It, yeah, it, it'll yeah, not, yeah, it's not yeah. going to work that way. But uh, as, I suppose everybody's working to get to that end game as quickly yes. as possible. But at and the same to, time, taking a good outcome board. that yeah. suits everyone. Uh, well, we're going to stay with Warren Point now and another part of the heritage of Warren Point, the baths. That's been an ongoing uh, saga, can I say, for a number of years. An ongoing sore, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, it, it, I, I believe there's some sort of a, a development strategy in the pipeline. Yeah, again, that's uh, a partnership and council working together with other uh, groups out there to try and come up with something. There's no doubt about it, the baths has become in years gone by an eyesore in the town and it was a case in the past council have went out to try and do something with it but it wasn't mm. wasn't feasible and it didn't happen but i think uh, we need to do something with it because uh, it can't go on the way it, it can't continuously go on the way it is at the moment so there is uh, a plan is afoot and i think everybody would like to see something done with it. there's no doubt about that in the town it's uh, it's one of those things that people keep bringing up with us as local councillors yeah, and with the yeah. local council but uh, you also have to give credit to East Coast Adventure Centre and all that they do around the they baths. They have made yeah. a and good facility out of it. Absolutely, really. and I was going to say even the summer, but throughout the year, the number of young people you do see down on the, mm. the shoreline, and be it out in boats or banana boats or whatever it is, but it, it does draw people into that area. And, and this year we put the sand on the beach, which that's is something that great. used to happen years yes. ago, but it, it sort of uh, fell away, but it's back now. That's two years in a row when we done. Uh, we went further this year with it, and it's great actually to see, uh, and I suppose again the, the weather helped, but families actually down using the beach Good. again, and people actually in the water, which uh, was absent for quite a time. Well, Councillor Carr, I'm sure you uh, you remember swimming in the baths. Would you uh, like to see <coughs> it reinstated as a, a, a bath, yeah. or what would you like to see there? I have very fond memories of the baths, mm. uh, and it, it was a very active place when I was growing up. Not only did we swim in it, we had hot uh, sea baths in it. Um, the uh, Paul McAvoy, who, who used to look after that, uh, he, he was the manager. And then in the evening time, we had discos on top of it with, really? with some of the uh, some great bands about Warren Point. So yes, very fond memories. Uh, when I first came in council, we really believed that we could get a new swimming pool in Warren Point. It hasn't happened, 
and I'd say that that will be a source of disappointment, certainly to me personally, uh, and so on. But uh, we we are doing a job on it, um, and um, the application, the planning application, will be submitted this year, and hopefully we can get the we can get the necessary funding to bring it back into life, if nothing else. Yeah. Certainly, open space, community space, uh, opportunity for uh, even. Uh, again, to show part of the heritage of Warren Point and so on. But one thing we did insist on uh, at, at some of the meetings was that we don't forget that it is the baths. And we introduce sauna, Turkish baths, Swedish baths, whatever it is, that there is an area there that people can go And that would be a huge attraction bath. as well, wouldn't well, it? Well, it would be something, but it's only a part of it when it should be the complete thing. Uh, it, is a, it is a big disappointment, you know, the... the uh, and. I suppose to be truthful, we're hoping, or uh, you know, that under the auspices of the new council, mm -hmm. um, which is is more a coastal council now than 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 Yerry Morn was in itself, uh, when you include pla places like Newcastle, Ardglass, and, so. and so on, that maybe there will be an opportunity that some day in the future yeah. to have a swimming pool in Morn Point. Well, we can we can only hope. Well, just staying with Warren Point, you talked about uh, community there. Uh, given that uh, Warren Point is the only town, I believe, in, in Urian Warren that doesn't have a community centre as such, uh, there's plans, I think, in the pipeline to maybe uh, house a one-stop shop with a new community centre, health, library, all under the one roof. Uh, can you tell us something about that? Yeah, I suppose it's at the very early stages, but uh, there's no doubt about it. The Warren Point lacks dramatically with uh, community facilities and always has done and it's been a running sore I think in council that uh, outside of Newry City Warren Point was the biggest town in the district and mm -hmm. it, it never had a facility. Now you can't lay the blame solely on council for that there not happening. I think the sense of community within Warren Point had been lacking in mm -hmm. years gone by and I think uh, people need to step up to the mark as well but if there's another way of doing it, and that includes us bringing along the health uh, mm -hmm. centre, the library, and whoever else might uh, fit into that. into that. Yeah, I think uh, we have to look outside the box and try to come up with something different, but whatever we do, at the end of it, we have a community facility there that will serve the needs of the town, because it, it is sorely needed and sorely lacking. Michael, have you any thoughts on that? Yeah, we've been in, involved in, in early discussions on the, on the whole situation. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's a runner or, or, or not. Uh, it may well be. Um, but the, uh, there seems to be a certain reluctance uh, about some of the other facilities maybe even coming on board in the hub mm -hmm. uh, and where you're located and, and all sorts of things. To me, it almost uh, was another way of getting a community centre. You know, we give you a community centre if you let us have all of these <laughs> other things. And like Michael says, we've been, we've been starved of community facilities and, and to a certain degree, uh, uh, leisure facilities as well yeah. in Mourne Point. Uh, sometimes uh, we're the end in Yuri and Mourne. You know, that uh, we, we have missed out. In, in, the, in the lifetime, uh, I mean, when the analysis is done, Eventually, we have missed out a bit uh, on facilities in the lifetime of, of, uh, of this council, I think. Uh, my predecessor, Jim McCart, he used to say, <coughs> we're too big to be a small town and too small to be a big town. And we kept, uh, as we do, and, and he's right, yeah. we kept falling through the cracks. When, yeah, when and you don't have that sense run. of community in, in Warren Point, which you may have in some of the smaller villages. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's been yeah. lacking in the yeah. past, but yeah. I think there's yeah. been vast improvements in Good. it over yeah. the last number of years, and I think people are trying to see that uh, you can't wait for something to happen. You have to go out there you and try and make, make it happen, happen as well. Yeah. And maybe agree differently with Michael on the issue of the community centre and what goes into it and what doesn't go into it. <laughs> I think actually looking, and I've been to a, a number of centres around that actually have this one-stop shop mm. type of idea where you have uh, the health centre, the uh, library, the community centre facilities all under the one roof and they all uh, work off each other, they all feed off each other and I just think it's a good fit. Uh, our library in Warren Point is well in need of an upgrade, you know, mm. and the facilities needed improved in there. The health centre has uh, been upgraded recently, but again, it's probably in need of a new build as well. Yeah. So if we can find that uh, site that allows us to build all in the one 
uh, on the one side, then I think that's the way forward. But that's probably something for the for the new council. It is. Really I, at this I stage. think that no, even no. at this early stage within the new council, we have sort of uh, in discussions and workshops we've had, we've been pointing to the, the new council that they have to look at areas where there's, they're lacking in certain things. Mm. And instead of continuing on the way we went as we had, that we need to, for instance, Warren Point, lack of community facility. Well, then we as a new council need to work up something that uh, gives a, f a facility okay. somewhere along the line. Right, okay. And that's just using Warren Point as, as an example. There's other areas out there, even Restraver, yeah, mm. so lacks a facility of uh, some right. description. Mm. You know, and you see uh, Bally Holland there have been very successful lately. and. Fair play to them and the community and there got in together. South Armagh, Colombo yeah. and Cross oh. Midland. And I think January, February, Ballyholland should be finished. finished. So if Ballyholland uh, can make use of a, a centre, I think we're well in need of something Absolutely. similar as well. Absolutely. Well, speaking yeah. of something that didn't happen, <laughs> the, the, the narrow water bridge. Is that dead in the water now, or what's, what's the state of play on that? No, I wouldn't say it's dead in the water at all. <laughs> Far from it, and I think it was an opportunity, a huge opportunity lost. And uh, even to this day, if it had went ahead, uh, I would imagine the build would have been well on its way, and the sort of uh, the anticipation that would have created in the building process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until getting yes. to the, the stage of finishing all that there. I just think, not just solely from a Warren Point perspective, but from... Uh, Nearly and more in the new council area, the Louth area, it just would have been, I think, the catalyst for the whole regeneration of uh, this area, the tourism yeah. product mm -hmm. in the area, and That's it just true. would have opened the whole thing up. But uh, what I have to say is the grouping, that uh, the support group that have got together, and their representatives from South Down, Louth, the all the councils are involved in it, and we actually have a meeting coming up this month with the chief executives of Louth Council, Nearly and Mourne Council, and down council and the chief executive of the new council to see where we go from here and I think uh, we have to plan ahead and we have to look ahead and look we ahead. have to think that it's still doable. Do you think um, Councillor Carter would be a, a great loss uh, to tourism and, and economic regeneration if it doesn't happen? Um, <coughs> I wasn't a, a cheerleader in the same way that many were, you know, and I know Michael was and it's been a great loss to a great disappointment to a lot of people in the Warren Point area. Um, so, yes, there's an opportunity lost. There's no question about that. Um, and an opportunity lost with our marina, which I hope uh, also hasn't gone off the uh, map altogether. I, I do know that there's some efforts now to uh, revisit that and see if there's some other funding streams that might be able to support that. Um, I think the future of Warren Point and the future of the whole South Down area lies in the Southern Relief Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I would love to see um, all political leaders uh, around the district come in, roll in behind that and, and support it because not only will it help Newry with so much of its problems with air quality and, and so on, the 600 truck movements from, from, from one point, point harbour mm -hmm. go through Newry every day, that would be taken out of it straight away. But if you could just imagine driving from Belfast to Dublin and there's a sign of uh, the, the motorway one point four mile. It would <laughs> yes, just would bring a lot of more people up. in. Uh, and uh, you know, the Narrow Water Bridge came very, very close to fruition, but it it didn't happen. And uh, I, I I I just feel that if all of the efforts were put into this one project, even if you called it the Narrow Water Bridge, there was an offlet. It could serve the same purpose. Yes. With a a, a small road off down onto the Meath Road. But uh, I think we need to get behind the Southern Relief Road. Just, uh, I would just come in on that. There, I think all the political parties, to be fair to them, have backed both mm -hmm. projects. And I think two, the two projects are different in their mm -hmm. own. Yes. Uh, one's a tourism project, and one's about the infrastructure of the whole, the whole area. This whole area, mm -hmm. not just the the Warren Point Newry area, but uh, I think everybody's been vastly supportive of it over the, the the time. And I think everybody would like to see both projects happen. I don't think just because the Nara Water Bridge failed this time, and it was so close. It to was it, so it close, wasn't it? You know, we were really yeah. cutting think, the ribbon uh, there. Like. Exactly, <laughs> and I think we need to keep at it. And you know, we've been neglected in this part of the country for a long, long time. And why shouldn't we have uh, both? Maybe it, the the one thing about the Southern Reef Road, it's uh, the expense that is huge, yes. and it'll take. Uh, a big political lobby and a huge amount of money to put that project in place and probably the cost is probably the prohibitive uh, side of that protector scheme. So the, potentially the bridge is a more doable one 
because of the cost. Well, gentlemen, you're both going on through to the new council, so no doubt you'll be fighting the corner of uh, Newry and Warren Point and Restrever when things are happening there. So, uh, thank you very much. Mm. And there's a lot happening in Warren Point. There's a lot in the pipeline. Uh, yeah. So, no doubt. As and, I say, across yeah. and across leaf. Yeah. And across yeah. <laughs> We've just talked about Warren Point <laughs> yeah. today, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> given the fact we have two Warren Point men on. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yes, there's a lot more to yeah. uh, Crotleaf, and I'm yeah. sure you represent all of yeah. the um, people in, in Crotleaf. But thank you very much for joining you, uh, me thank today. And viewers, uh, I'll be back next week when I'll be uh, chatting to councillors from St. Gullion. <laughs>